Hello and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 121, Tyler's the Funny One, recorded on November 20th, 2020 from Zenata Consulting. I'm Brett Martin. I'm Tyler Colt, and let's get right on into the show. All right, we've got uh, a lot to talk about. So we've had a lot of technical difficulties here, folks. So uh, bear with us if you're listening to this episode. We hope it's the best. We hope it turns out okay. We'll start with our uh, announcements. Uh, hey, coming up next Tuesday, November 24th at 10 a.m., we're going to be doing our Zoho Sales IQ Overview and Best Practices webinar. We hope to see you there. And with that, let's kind of get straight on into the news. Um, wow. Transmail has left beta and uh, has finally uh, finally gone live. So it's... Uh, it's crazy. So basically, we talked about this on episode one on July 11th, 2018. I think it was an alpha or beta then. And now it is, uh, it's actually live. So for those of you that aren't familiar, Transmail is what they're cons- naming for a transactional email. So this is a completely separate service that you can tap into that's going to kind of basically send emails, you know, in automatic response emails. Uh, and it's, they use it on all 45 of their applications. So any, any time where, you know, an invoice is automatically going out an auto reply, all of those kind of things, uh, all of that has been handled by this transmail service. And now they've made it available as an individual application. So uh, it's, it's pretty nice actually play with it over the, over a long period of time, but you know, you take Transmail and what's the new service they uh, offer? Team, Team Mail. What are they calling it? Uh, team Inbox. Team Inbox. Uh, they're really doing a lot with uh, with with their whole email service. So, uh, pretty nice. Yeah, and this is actually the mail server that your CRM emails, if their system emails, have run through. You know, and you go and you set up your SPF. They've been. Uh, been using this for a little while, but I guess they're now rolling out a beta officially. No, but it's uh, it's kind of nice, easy to set up. Gives you, you know, it's a whole nother way of handling things if you really want to kind of send these things out. So it's nice that it's there. They're going to have a discount. I don't know if it's part of Zoho One or not. I'm assuming it's going to be part of Zoho One. Um, if not. Pricing is relatively cheap, uh, $2.50 for 10,000 emails. So uh, not uh, not a particularly expensive service, but, you know, it's going to be uh, it'll be good to see how this goes. And I think I can see some uses for this down the road. And then over and above that, over on uh, the CRM side of things, this is really a convoluted post, but in the past, when you set up a new user in the CRM, uh, the last name was required. Uh, now the first name is going to be required. Uh, and so I'm wondering, Tyler, you know, you've got this issue where, you know, you're getting all these crazy double ups on names, right? Where, you know, be Brett, Brett Martin, Martin, or Brett Martin, Brett Martin, or all those kind of things that were happening. I don't know if this is maybe part of that fix. Um, but now when you add a new user, you need to put their first name in. I recommend you put their first and last name in. Uh, but this is uh, this has been kind of an issue, I guess, where if you just did the last name, it would kind of duplicate it. Um, and anyway, uh, I haven't, uh, have you noticed anything around this? No, I haven't seen it roll out quite yet. It looks like they're still kind of planning on implementing this. But yeah, hopefully it does help tackle that naming issue that uh, we've been seeing for a little while now. Yeah. So I, I don't, did you read this post? It's hysterical. Anyway, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot going on in that post. All right, let's move on to our next story. Uh, hey, the CRM marketplace, uh, the Zoho marketplace, the CRM aspect actually hit over 500 extensions. This is just growing, you know, with the implementation of Catalyst. Uh, this is just really, it's it. There's there's a lot going on here, so it's it, it's good to see this continued growth. We talk about this a lot. Uh, they kind of talk about some of their big ones that are out there. Um, you know, some use cases for some people. It's funny as I look at these. This phone checker one we've used in the past. Great application. Ver- verifies whether or not a phone number is real or not. Uh, Clearbit does an entire 
basically looking on the back end and filling in information that might be missing. It's kind of, if you notice how you've got, you know, the enhancement where if you're in the CRM and you can click, you know, enhance this record, we've got enhancement details where it comes in and it finds things clear, but it kind of takes that to the next level. Uh, advanced down round robin. We've used that in the past as well. That's that that's a nice one if you want to kind of go over and above the the round robin features. But you know, 500 applications. We talk about these, I think, as much as we possibly can on the show whenever a, a really good one comes up. But we're seeing a real lot of point solutions come out of this as well. You can tell where you clearly have a Zoho consultant or somebody who's just doing it on their own who's got Zoho and they need to build this this. Own, their own little solution to solve a problem. And a lot of these extensions seem to do that. And it's really interesting. If you go search in there now, you can find, you know, it's it's getting to be rare that you can't find somebody who's built some sort of extension to solve your problem. Whether or not it's great or not, that's up for debate, but uh, they're working on it. And it is time after time, we just see an insane amount of growth on uh, Zoho Marketplace. I mean, they've They've rolled out so much over the past year to just make it easier and easier to deploy these types of extensions. So it's cool to see, cool to see it blossom. Yeah. All righty. And then Zoho Campaign's Instant Sync for CRM accounts has been disabled. So this isn't necessarily contacts. Um, it's kind of unfortunate what we're seeing here, but basically the instant sync is broken for the accounts fields. So because it's not actually instantly syncing, they just completely turned it off. Um, and I don't know if this is really the only problem we're seeing here, because this is interesting. We've actually been having problems with instant sync all the way around. Um, and the fact of the matter is, is in campaigns, sync is not sync. It's kind of, a it's instant it should be, what's the word? It's kind of an instant one-way push, right? <laughs> from CRM to... Yeah, to, but it doesn't always get, it doesn't remove people from those lists if they're no longer yeah. in the matching list in the CRM. Yeah, so uh, there's been absolutely no update on this. This was posted four days ago. Uh, you know, they just took it down for a while. I guess nobody cared, but uh, you know, if you are syncing that account information in, which can be relatively important, especially if you're doing emails that are pulling in variables and those kind of things, you kind of need some of those account fields in. You know, we actually do it all the time in stuff we're doing. So it's uh, hopefully this gets fixed sooner rather than later, and we'll need to go ahead and uh, follow up on that as well. Uh, speaking of following up, I don't actually have it in the doc here, but we ran. Uh, a full battery of tests on Zoho Meetings' new recording engine, and it uh, unfortunately did not hold up. It wasn't uh, it wasn't good. It was drop frames. The audio was bad. There was all kinds of things. So I reached out to Zoho about it. Haven't heard back. But you know that's that's the big thing with with Meeting and with Showtime. Both of those applications, the the main thing they're lacking is a really robust recording engine, because especially. On the Showtime side of things, you know, if you're doing a training or you're doing a webinar using Showtime, you're probably going to want to repost that. You're going to want to edit it. And you're going to want to have high quality video and high quality screen screen shares that you can you can pass on. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they get that fixed. Yeah, it's kind of the one big prohibitor for us still on uh, on using those tools. We say it a lot, but we do really love them. It's just that last uh, last little bit of functionality we need. Yep. And over in uh, mobile app news, this is actually nice. So Zoho's done something here. Zoho dashboards in CRM, which in depending on what version of CRM you're on, sometimes they're now called analytics, which is a little confusing because you know for people that are in the CRM, um, you've got reports, you've got dashboards. Now you have basically analytics, which matches up with analytics. And then Zoho CRM also has campaigns, which really isn't Zoho campaigns, which is a piece of campaign. So there's some naming issues here. So dashboards, analytics. The cool thing is none of this was really available for you on the mobile application in any meaningful way. And they've done a really, really nice revamp of this naming uh, naming conventions aside, they've kind of done a really nifty revamp where you now actually can do some things, bring in the dashboards, change them, look at them, share them. Uh, it's great. I played around with it in the mobile app and uh, super, super nice. Only for iOS. 
Yeah, and these are kind of nice just being able to flip the way that the data is being presented, right? So you could look at it as a bar chart, as a pie chart, you know, change it over to a line graph, however you want to see it. Just being able to flip them around on the fly is, uh, is pretty nice. Yeah, and I'm glad to see they keep making these improvements on the mobile side because it seems like, uh, you know, every not a day goes by where we don't see something, uh, you know, something new, some nice, really nice improvements on mobile and and they're kind of all over it. And then we've got the upcoming events. If you uh, aren't familiar, if you go to CRM Zen and you uh, take a look at our at the top bar, we've got an entire events section, and we are updating this daily. And there's some really good stuff coming up. Uh, we've got integrating Zoho Creator with Zoho Writer and Zoho Sign. Uh, business website basics. Uh, there's a Zoho site thing, and then they're doing a whole Zoho site demo. So those are kind of back-to-back -back days doing Zoho sites. There's this great sales IQ webinar coming up. Uh, then they've got, this is a new one too, on November 25th, Zoho CRM setup and customization. Uh, looks like it's going to be pretty interesting. They're going to kind of go through that on a basic level. Uh, then on the 26th, OAuth components, uh, in creator and then our show. So it's a good week of stuff kind of all, you know, I mean, they're actually have things happening on Thanksgiving. So we try to find all these events. If you find an event, please send it over to us. We're happy to add it into this calendar. Uh, it, it's, uh, but I'm happy, you know, it's, it's really nice since we started collating all these events, Tyler, uh, they're hard to find. They're scattered all over the place, but uh, there's really a lot of good content that's out there. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things we mentioned this last week too is sometimes these are announced, you know, just a couple days before they're going to go on. And, you know, if you're not regularly checking all those different places where they might be making the announcements, they're definitely easy to miss. Um, yeah. But, you know, we found a lot of these add a lot of value. I mean, even some of them are just showcasing what you can do, you know, and then you'll might need to do a little more research to set it up yourself, but it, they definitely jumpstart you in the right direction. And that brings us to our implementation of the week. Assuming your internet holds up for the next three, four minutes, what do we got? <laughs> so yeah, this week we had a integration between CRM and desk, uh, basically to submit deployment or change requests based on things happening in the CRM. Um, so basically what we did here is, you know, we created a custom module related to accounts in order to store different products or services that a customer might be paying for. And these are the type of services that, you know, they need to pay every month and kind of have an active license to use. Um, and so you've got different products or services that might be active or inactive or, you know, in the process of being deployed. And basically what we did is that, you know, when any additions or edits are made to this list, uh, we roll up data at the account level and then we submit a, um, a desk ticket for that account and for that primary contact on the account to notify the technical team that an update is needed, right? So let's say if they want to increase the quantity of one of their services, maybe permission 10 users instead of five, right? We can basically submit a ticket and say, you know, to the deployment team for this account, you know, this service, we need to raise their limit up to 10 rather than five. So the idea is just to limit the requirement of, you know, the sales team either manually submitting these tickets or, you know, just emailing or messaging with the deployment team to um, notify them that these changes need to be made, all right? So it kind of just brings everything all under one roof where, you know, as the salespeople are making these sales and updating things in the CRM, the tickets just get uh, fired off automatically and the deployment team can begin that process. And there's some kind of cool stuff under the hood here as well, where, you know, based on the product, so let's say we have an SLA period for a certain product where, it's going to be deployed within three days, right? We're actually setting the ticket due date and priority based on how long it's supposed to take to deploy certain things, right? So for a product where the expectation is maybe two weeks to deploy it, that might go in as a lower priority ticket with a due date further out in the future versus something that's, you know, mission critical, urgent, and needs to be done within 24 hours is going to be, you know, have the due date set accordingly and be marked as a high priority ticket for the uh, deployment team. This is slick. I mean, this has just, there's a lot of things you can do with this across the board. I mean, so you're basically saying any, you could, this doesn't have to be a custom module or anything like that. So if I tick a field in the CRM, we can then basically open a desk ticket and route it, right? 
yep. at, the, at its simplest level, changes made to the CRM by somebody, whether it's whatever it is, you can, you can open a ticket, route it to the proper person based upon what's going on in the CRM. So yep. And so, yeah, you could totally set automate that priority. Process. Beautiful. Exactly. You could set who it should be assigned to as well. So if certain products should be assigned to John and others should be assigned to Susie, as long as you denote that within your products table, then you're able to basically pull all that data and, and create the ticket dynamically. I mean, I see this on a, you know, there's a lot of clients where we talk about, you know, post sale, right? Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, you know, you've closed the deal and then, you know, normally we're opening up a whole bunch of tasks and things like that. But basically you could then, when it gets to a certain level, you could fire off desk tickets as well. Correct? With exactly. this function? Sweet. We done yep. this for anybody. The before? trick is you do need to have somewhere somewhere in the process because the contact is a required field for a ticket. You have to have somewhere identified who the contact should be for that account that gets assigned the ticket. So if you have like let's say you have three contacts in your account, maybe you add a field to one of them and mark them as like the primary technical point of contact or something in that vein so that the system knows which person should be the assigned contact. And it's not super important. You could always reassign it later, but there just has to be someone identified as the initial person to assign that ticket to. Nice. So that's maybe an additional field you have to add. That's it. Yep. Or some type of rule, like the first contact created. It just needs something to identify from that account, you know, which who, who the right person is. But we could, of course, hard code that, right? Based upon certain things. Yep. Sweet. You could. What a nice implementation. I like it. You know, it's great for me. I'm always surprised by these every week. It's like, wow, we did some nice stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that brings us to this week's reads. I'm going to Zoho. Uh, they did it again. And this is, uh, this is a nice one. It's basically, you know, five click channels you need. And I, I, this, I don't know, hit me at the right time, I guess, because we're, we're just such big click users and I actually added a channel the other night and I was looking at our channels and actually I've got a task today to talk to you about our channels and getting them cleaned up just because of this. Because we use channels inside Click all the time. And if you're not familiar with Click, it's inner office communications. If you're familiar with Slack, it is a clone for all intents and purposes of Slack. And it basically allows you to, you know, have external communication, internal communication, a combination of both, uh, where people can chat about various things. You can share documents. And it's really powerful. We've talked about it a lot. But one of the most powerful aspects is just creating channels where you can talk about different things. Uh, the, you know, the click channel I created was an internal channel, basically saying, anytime you come across an event, it's called Zoho Events Channel, please drop the link in here and we'll get it added to the calendar. That's an example of it. And then this article really is, you know, here are, when you're, when you're thinking about doing this, you know, put together some channels that that everybody can use. And as I went through this, we pretty much already have these channels in place, Tyler. Yeah, and I mean, it's just a pretty important thing for keeping communication segmented and kind of grouped up properly so that people aren't needing to see things that they don't need to see. You know, another example from our team internally is, you know, we have a channel for things about the website, right? And so I'm involved in that channel, though at the end of the day, you know, most of the time we're working with Tavin, our web designer, working with you. So, you know, I know that when things are going off in that channel, it's not super high priority for me to look at it versus if something comes through on a development channel, I need to jump on that right away, right? So it's a good way to just keep things segmented based on topic and, you know, keep your communications prioritized how you'd like them. Yeah. And you can do a lot with these channels. I mean, another channel we have, we, we've got an internal announcement, we've got a team, but, you know, we have on the internal announcement side, anytime a... Uh, opportunity that we're working with. A client basically signs a contract uh, and that gets moved to the next stage that the contract was signed. An announcement goes out saying, hey, guess what, everybody? We have a new client and here are the details and there's a link to it and everybody can look at it and see what's going on. Um, and then when the person pays and it gets moved into an active client that we're working and it gets moved to that stage, an announcement goes out and says, hey, they've paid their invoice, they've been moved into production and all of that information automatically gets shared in that channel. So everybody can kind of see that in real time. And those automations with these channels, they're super easy to do. Uh, but this is a good article. You know, there's just a, a, if you're not using click, 
internally, I really, uh, I really think you, you should uh, make sure the channels, you know, one of the nice parts of this article is you know, every channel has a clear name and a clear description and that they follow the same naming guidelines and you keep them organized and delete the unused channels. That's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was this number three. So good article. I'm really happy to see some of this stuff coming out of Zoho lately. It, it's a massive improvement over what they've done in the past. And, you know, it's just, uh, they're getting some good writers going on right now. And that brings us to what's new over on Zanata.com. We've got our blog. We'll talk about Zoho Workerly. For those of you that are not familiar, Workerly is your temporary staff application. This is hourly workers. Um, basically people where they're going to put in the time that they're available, what hours they're available, you know, these kind of a temp worker and it's super nice. You can see their calendar, you can assign them. It's got paperless timesheets. It all ties back into Zoho books. Uh, it's a, a really nice application. We kind of step you through the benefits of Zoho Workerly. And, and this is kind of a new one to their suite of applications. So we're trying to put out a little bit of content to help you take a look at it, if it could be uh, useful for your company. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good. It, we, it, it kind of ties in to a couple of their other apps. You know, it, it's basically, it's, it's a tie into Zoho people in a lot of ways, but it's for temporary workers. So it's kind of nice that way. One of the things about Zoho people is for an order for a person to be in Zoho people, they actually have to have a Zoho CRM license. And so you want them, you know, with workerly, that's not the case. And so you can do some, do some interesting things there. And then as we continue to scour for the guides, we've got a nice little Zoho back to work guide. Uh, you can tell this one was kind of thrown together, not a lot of graphics, but this is, uh, Zoho's got a back to work application built into people, but then they recently released a back to work creator app which is, you know, for getting everybody back to work and workplace setup and wellness and all the things you have to do as everybody goes back to work. I think we're all under the assumption we're going to be going back to work one day, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. These lockdowns keep continuing. Hopefully we can all get back to work in the office one day. We have another guide in here, which is on FAQs for actionable NPS survey. I actually have no idea what that is, but uh, got two of the same links. So we'll post that link. We'll get that corrected and you'll see that in the newsletter. Uh, if you don't know what we're trying to do every week is we scour the net, find two relevant guides that Zoho has put out in PDF. They're just kind of laying out there and all over the place we find these things and we're organizing all of them in our resources library so if you go into our resources library over at zanata.com you basically can go to whatever app you're looking for and in that app we'll have these things all completely organized so that you can go through and just take a look and can sort these by buy guides and buy articles and buy videos and kind of go through and they'll all be there for you to kind of quickly, hopefully find the things you want. Here's that guide, the facts on actual MPS survey. So uh, what is an MPS survey? Oh, net promoter score. All right. I get it now. Um, which actually, this is pretty cool. I like that. So uh, nice. So a nice guide on how to implement net pr promoter score inside your CRM. Actually, I'm excited about this one. Uh, good stuff. So anyway, easy to find these guides. Again, go to the resources, choose the app you're looking for, select guides, and they're all there. We've tried to, tried to organize them in a nice uh, way. So hopefully you find that useful. All right, Tyler, you were offline. I told everybody else this who was uh, in our chat room, but I can no longer do the application of the week. I sometimes run out. So now I've made it the application slash product of the week making my life a little easier. <laughs> so um, cameras, it's, it's a big thing now, you know, everybody's working from home, everybody's working remotely and the best camera on the marketplace is the Logitech C90. Unfortunately, that has been out of stock pretty much since March 15th. And if you can find it, it's usually marked up by anywhere from 50 to 300%. It's just, it's just crazy. And if you've never looked at, there's a website called Wirecutter. 
uh, wirecutter.com is by the New York Times. They do really good reviews where they go out and they say, what's the best camera? And they just do ex- testing. You know, they buy 50 webcams and then they test them and they run them through their paces. And they do this with everything. I mean, if you're looking for a shower head, I mean, it literally anything you want, I really recommend you kind of go there. It's a, it's a great resource for trying to find the very best products you can. And so since the uh, camera I wanted was out of stock, I purchased one that kind of was a clone of it. And we've been using it for the last couple of weeks on the show. I really have not been happy with the overall quality of it at all. And so uh, I'm like, well, we've got to be able to find a, a, a better one to, to make this work. And so Wirecutter could rank this as kind of like their second best kind of pick. And I'm really, really happy with it. I think the quality of it is very good. It is available at its price of $99. Not on Amazon, um, but you can get it on Walmart. You can get it directly from the Razer website. But it's a great, uh, great camera. It's got a ring light. Uh, if you've got a a Mac, you'll have to get an application called uh, Webcam Settings, which I think is five bucks if you want to kind of play with anything like turning off autofocus. If you've got a PC, it comes with a suite of software to to manage this. This is a gamer camera. It's really for streaming and those kind of things. So it's a, a pretty good. Pretty good camera. I'm pretty happy with it. Nice resolution. And with that, let's go to our tip and trick of the week. So we've been doing these videos. Uh, they're all over on um, the Zanata uh, YouTube.com slash Zanata. And if you go over there and you scroll down to our tips and tricks, we're trying to release these all the time. And this one is on organizing your tab groups in the CRM. And man, we see this all the time where people are basically, you know, they've got just dozens and dozens and dozens of tabs that are, you know, across their top of their CRM. They're not using half of the modules. So if you don't know all the little tabs that sit across the top of the CRM, they're in fact, nothing more than your modules that that you can access. So it's accounts and contacts and activities and all those kind of things. But in most cases, most people really aren't using all of those modules at all. And so this kind of tip takes you through about, okay, how do we, number one, set up tab groups? How does this entire thing work? What kind of tabs do we have? How do we turn off those modules? How do we clean them up? How do we rearrange them? How do we organize them? Uh, And so you can kind of really just kind of drill down to what you want to get. It's a very simple thing. And a lot of these tips and tricks are, but You know, Tyler, it's just surprising uh, how often we get asked these questions. And it seems like a simple thing because I think we live inside the CRM on a day-to-day basis. Uh, But in fact, it, uh, you know, it's not so simple if you don't know it, right? And I think this is one that's just pretty important for keeping things clean and easy. You know, so for example, you might have a couple different teams and, you know, maybe the accounting team just really doesn't need to see leads, Right, but the sales team definitely needs to see leads. So you can kind of create these different tab organizations so that uh, people are just seeing the stuff that they need to because the minute that you're showing, you know, a bunch of users records or sections that they don't need to work within, you know, you're just making their life uh, harder than it needs to be. Yeah, and it's just, it, it's just important. And you can assign defaults, so it's, uh, it's pretty good. So anyway, you can check that over at uh, youtube.com slash Zanata. And that brings us to our Q and a, and we don't really have a Q and a for in the chat room, but um, one of our listeners, Kevin said there was a massive issue with OAuth uh, this week where basically uh, all of his OAuth connections were disconnected and uh it was just a real problem. And he finally actually got a response from uh, Zoho saying that uh, they had a bug in yesterday's update, which caused issues with the connectors. We had reverted the update. However, the affected connections must be edited and re-authenticated again. Kindly add and remove an existing scopes from the connection and then re-authenticate. So uh, he says it took them a few hours to get back to him on that. So three hours yesterday to get them to even acknowledge that it existed, but there's a problem clearly. Um, so if you've had any of these issues with OAuth, that is what it is. And you're going to have to reauthenticate. So Kevin, thanks for that. 
All right, Tyler, that's a wrap. And I really love doing the show for you guys. If you've got any questions or comments, you can send them to us over at info at zanata.com or just head over to crmzen.com and drop us a line. And on the website, that's where you'll find complete episodes as well as show notes with links to the stories we discussed today. You can also follow us on your favorite social media platform and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app as well as on YouTube. We'll see you next Monday.